वी ऑल नो मलेरिया इज कॉस्ड बाय प्लाज्मोडियम एंड वी हैव करंटली फाइव स्पीसीज ऑफ प्लाज्मोडियम फोर वी ऑल नो प्लाज्मोडियम वाइवेक्स ओवेल एल्सीपेरम एंड मलेरियाई नाउ रिसेंटली द फिफ्थ पैरासाइट इज आल्सो फाउंड टू कॉज ह्यूमन इन्फेक्शन द नेम ऑफ दैट पैरासाइट इज प्लाज्मोडियम नोएलसी इज द फिफ्थ पैरासाइट सो मलेरियल पैरासाइट प्लाज्मोडियम how it cause infection now this is human blood this is liver this is rbc in the blood we know plasmodium is transmitted by anopheles mosquito so this is a female anopheles it contains sporozoites of the plasmodium which is the infective stage so plasmodium is present in the mosquito so when the mosquito bites the plasmodium is sent in the blood but this plasmodium do not stay in the blood it very quickly goes to liver within few minutes only it will reach the liver but in the liver it has two fates either this will go and sleep in the liver that means it become dormant and this dormant stage is called as hypnozoid stage hypnozoid stage but more commonly it goes in the liver and start multiplying either it can become inactive or it starts multiplying now when it starts multiplying after some time it will reach the blood again but now inside the rbcs so it will go inside the rbcs and it will continue to multiply inside the rbc so when lot of parasite have been produced inside the rbc the rbc will rupture and it is this time when the symptoms of malaria will come the fever chills and rigors they correspond to rupture of rbc so when the rbc rupture the parasite will be liberated so now this parasite can enter the other rbcs or this parasite is converted to male and female gametes so either it go to other rbcs or it is converted to gametes if it goes to other rbcs same cycle will start but if it go converted to gametes then these gametes cannot fuse in human blood gametes they can fuse only inside the mosquito remember malaria we have two hosts ek one is definitive host second is intermediate host definitive host is a host where sexual cycle occur and intermediate host is where asexual cycle occur so for malarial parasite humans are intermediate host they are only asexual cycle occurs so when the gametes has to fuse means it is uh, sexual cycle so if the mosquito bites again now anopheles will pick these gametes so they will fuse inside the anopheles mosquito and form a new plasmodium so this mosquito is now ready to transmit the malaria to some other person so the gametes the only clinical importance is they act as a source of transmission so revising what we have studied so far anopheles mosquito bite the humans sporozoites of the plasmodium come in the blood very quickly it go to liver either it is dormant in the liver or it starts multiplying when it starts multiplying it will come in the rbc multiply in the rbc rupture the rbc that cause symptoms of malaria parasite is liberated into the blood so either it goes to other rbcs or it is converted to gametes and these gametes are taken by anopheles to transmit the malaria now what about the parasite which is sleeping hypnozoid now this hypnozoid it can wake up at any time maybe after 2 days maybe after 10 days so whenever the hypnozoids wake up they will start multiplying and again the symptoms will start so these hypnozoids they are responsible for relapse of malaria that means when the person become a febrile again the person will develop fever because of hypnozoids so hypnozoids are responsible for relapse of malaria clear so now for ease of understanding the drugs we will divide this life cycle into different stages the stage inside the rbc it can be called as erythrocytic stage 
RBC is erythrocyte. These stage of gametes can be called as gametocytic stage. Then this and this stage, they are outside the RBC. So they are called as exoerythrocytic stage. The hypnozoid stage is called exoerythrocytic stage. Although this is also exoerythrocytic stage, but this is outside the RBC. But to differentiate from the hypnozoid stage, this is called as pre-erythrocytic stage. Pre-erythrocytic stage. So four stages: erythrocytic, gametocytic, exoerythrocytic, and pre-erythrocytic. First of all, we will try to understand the function of these stages. And what we will get if we kill this stage? Erythrocytic stage is causing symptoms. So if we kill this stage, we can treat the symptoms. Gametocytic stage is causing transmission. So if a drug kill this stage, it will prevent the transmission of malaria. Exoerythrocytic stage is responsible for relapse. So if a drug kill this stage, we can prevent the relapse. And lastly, pre-erythrocytic stage is the first stage. That means it is the cause of malaria. So, if we kill this stage, we can prevent the cause of malaria. Clear? So, now, before going further, we have two type of cure in malaria and we have two type of prophylaxis in malaria. The cures are called as clinical cure and radical cure. Prophylaxis may be suppressive prophylaxis and causal prophylaxis. So, two type of cure and two type of prophylaxis. First, we will try to understand what are the meaning of these terms. Now, clinical cure simply means treatment. So, we can treat the person by killing which stage? Yes, it is erythrocytic stage. So, if we kill the malarial parasite, after the rupture of RBC, because when the RBC rupture, it causes symptoms. So, if we kill, the symptoms will stop. So, that is called clinical cure. Now, radical cure means we will kill the erythrocytic stage, that means treat the malaria, but we will also make sure that the relapse do not occur. So, basically, the drug killing the exoerythrocytic stage will prevent the relapse. So, it is used for radical cure. Radical cure means we will remove the malaria from root. That means even relapse cannot occur. Now, suppressive prophylaxis means the malarial parasite has entered the RBC, but it has not ruptured the RBC. So, when the RBC has not been ruptured, the symptoms will not come. So, we give the drug to suppress the symptoms. So, when the symptoms do not come means we have prevented, but we have suppressed the symptoms from coming. So, that means in suppressive prophylaxis, we want to kill which stage? Again, erythrocytic stage. But the only difference is before the rupture of RBC. And lastly, causal prophylaxis means we want to prevent the cause of malaria. And cause of malaria is pre-erythrocytic stage. So, the drug killing the pre-erythrocytic stage are used for causal prophylaxis. Is it clear? Now, just we need to know the name of the drugs which drug act on which stage, so we can easily found the use of the drug. So, we have pre-erythrocytic stage, exoerythrocytic stage and gametocytic stage. One drug can kill all these three stages and that drug is primaquine. So, primaquine can kill all these stages. So, primaquine can be used for causal prophylaxis. Primaquine can be used for radical cure. And primaquine can be used to prevent transmission of malaria. But primaquine do not act on the erythrocytic stage. So, primaquine cannot be used to treat or prevent malaria. Now, we discussed that primaquine, it can kill the gametes as well as it can kill the hypnozoids means exoerythrocytic stage. But special points to remember, primaquine is the drug which can kill the gametes of 
all species of plasmodium vivax falciparum ovel malariae all these species gametes can be killed by prima this is important to remember because chloroquine and quinine can also kill gametes but they can kill the gametes of only plasmodium vivax okay second thing for killing the gametes only single dose is enough so prima quin can kill the gametes with single dose okay second it can kill the hypnozoids also exorithrocytic stage also but for killing the exorithrocytic stage it need to be given for 2 weeks 14 days for killing the gametes single dose but for killing the hypnozoids 14 days 2 weeks now what is important to remember exorithrocytic stage or hypnozoid stage is not present in all these species remember plasmodium falciparum do not contain exorithrocytic stage no exorithrocytic stage in plasmodium falciparum so plasmodium falciparum never show relapse in plasmodium falciparum there is never any relapse because there is no hypnozoid stage so so when we use primaquin for plasmodium falciparum we do not use it for exorithrocytic stage that means we want to use uh, kill only gametes because hypnozoids are not present so in falciparum malaria primaquin is given as single dose only whereas in case of vivax malaria we give it for 14 days because we want to kill the hypnozoids also this is one second important thing primaquin it can cause hemolysis in which patient yes in patient with g6pd deficiency so due to this reason one obviously primaquin is contraindicated in patient with g6pd deficiency second there is some physiological condition in which g6pd deficiency is present yes in the infants or newborn babies so primaquin is contraindicated throughout pregnancy in pregnancy we do not give primaquin as well as after the birth of the baby till 1 year that means in infants primaquin is contraindicated primaquin is contraindicated in g6pd deficiency in pregnancy and in infants the reason is same because it can cause hemolysis okay now recently we have developed a new drug which is called as tafenoquin tafenoquin is a new drug it is similar to primaquin but the special point to remember is it can kill the hypnozoids hypnozoids or we can say exorithrocytic stage the special thing is it can kill hypnozoids in a single dose so that means we can use tafenoquin as a single dose for plasmodium vivax also remember primaquin need to be given for 2 weeks for vivax whereas tafenoquin can be given in single dose because it kill the exorithrocytic stage in single dose but like primaquin it can also cause hemolysis in patient with g6pd deficiency so it is also contraindicated in pregnancy and infants apart from patient with g6pd deficiency okay now we will move to the main drugs drugs acting on erythrocytic stage now erythrocytic schizonticidal drugs we can divide them into fast acting drugs and slow acting drugs fast acting drugs you can remember in hindi from the cause of malaria fast acting drugs are remembered as machhar drugs in hindi machhar means mosquito so as malaria is transmitted by mosquito so machhar drugs they are used to treat malaria they are fast acting drugs and the name of the drugs are m is mefloquine A is atovaquone C is chloroquine H is halofentrin 
A is RT miscellence and R is rescue. Rescue is not a drug, it is the market name of a drug. The name of the drug is quinine. So you need to remember quinine. So fast acting drugs are remembered as machha drugs. Mefloquin, atovaquone, chloroquine, halofentrin, artemisinins and quinine. Whereas slow acting antimalarial drugs include proguanil, pyrimethamine, Sulfadoxin, Doxycycline, and Clindamycin. Proguanil, Pyrimethamine, Sulfadoxin, Doxycycline, and Clindamycin. They are slow acting antimalarial drugs. The important difference between Machcha drugs and slow acting drugs is that the Machcha drugs are fast acting. So that means these drugs can be used alone for treatment of malaria. So any of the Machcha drugs, mefloquine, chloroquine, they can be used alone for treatment of malaria. Whereas the slow acting drugs, they are never recommended alone for treatment of malaria. So they should always be given in combination with some fast acting drug. Because we want to treat malaria quickly. So we will add some fast acting drug for treatment of malaria when we use a slow acting drug. Now special point about some of the individual drugs. Mefloquine. Special point to remember it is very long acting drug. So it can be used as single dose treatment of malaria. Earlier it was used as single dose treatment of malaria. Nowadays we are using combination of drugs. Second, mefloquine can cause neuropsychiatric side effects. So it is contraindicated in patients with neurological diseases like seizures, epilepsy and psychiatric diseases like depression. So mefloquine is contraindicated. So these are special points about mefloquine. Then moving to special point about quinine. Quinine is effective against MDR parasites. That means when the malarial parasite is resistant to many drugs, it is still sensitive to quinine. So it can be used for multi-drug resistant malaria. But nowadays the preferred treatment of MDR parasite is ACT. We will discuss later on artemisinin based combination therapy is preferred. But Quinine has advantage that it is safe in first trimester of pregnancy. So in first trimester of pregnancy, drug of choice for plasmodium falciparum malaria, particularly MDR plasmodium falciparum malaria is quinine. Clear? Now quinine has lot of side effects. The important adverse effects of quinine you should remember. One, quinine. You can remember the similar drug we discussed in cardiovascular system was quinidine. So quinine and quinidine, they are derivatives of sincona plant. Sincona plant. So they are obtained from sincona plant. So if their overdose occur, it is called as synchronism. So in overdose, quinine can result in synchronism, which is characterized by features of this area. Features of this area means the person will develop headache. There will be headache, blurring of vision, tinnitus, ringing sensation in the ears, deafness. So these are the features of synchronism. Same features are seen in salicylism also. So synchronism, it can be caused by quinine. Second thing, because it is similar to quinidin, quinidin was used for? Yes, arrhythmias. So in overdose, quinine can cause arrhythmias. Remember, any antiarrhythmic drug can cause arrhythmias. So quinine is associated with arrhythmias. It can result in arrhythmias. And third important side effect is quinine can cause hypoglycemia. Quinine can result in hypoglycemia. 
Okay. So these are the important points about quinine to remember. Because of so many side effects, we usually want that quinine should not be given for long periods. If we use only quinine, we need to give for seven days for treatment of malaria. So to prevent using it for long periods, we usually add another drug with the quinine. The another drug which we commonly add is either doxycycline or clindamycin. So when we add doxycycline or clindamycin to quinine therapy, then we can decrease the duration of treatment from 7 days to 3 days. That means if we use only quinine, we need to give for 7 days. When we use quinine plus doxycycline, we can treat malaria in 3 days. Clear? You need to remember chloroquine. If malarial parasite is sensitive to chloroquine, it is a drug of choice. Chloroquine is safe in pregnancy also. However, chloroquine can cause a characteristic side effect which is called as bull's eye maculopathy. Bull's eye maculopathy. This side effect is seen only when chloroquine is given for many years. So it cannot appear in few days. In malaria, chloroquine is given for three days only. So it is unlikely to be present. So when we have found this side effect, it must be given for some indication for years also. So that means you need to remember what are the other uses of chloroquine also. So where chloroquine is used? The uses of chloroquine you can remember as red lips of Mahatma Gandhi used to remember the uses of chloroquine. So these include R for rheumatoid arthritis. So chloroquine is one of the disease modifying agents. E is extra intestinal amoebiasis. Chloroquine is used for extra intestinal amoebiasis. D for discoid lupus arrhythmatosis. L for lepra reactions. I for infectious mononucleosis. Infectious mononucleosis. P for photogenic reactions, photogenic reactions, M for malaria, and G for GRDS. These are the important uses of chloroquine. Chloroquine can cause bull's eye maculopathy only when it is used for long period, usually 3 to 5 years or more. Now, second important anti-malarial drug to remember, they are artemisinin group of drugs. Artemisinins. The name of the group is artemisinins. The drug in this group include artesunate. RT ether, RT meter, and dihydro RT missinens. RT sunet, RT ether, RT meter, and dihydro. Artemisinins. Special point about artemisinin group of drugs are these are fastest acting anti malarial drugs. These are fastest acting anti malarial drugs. Second, they are also effective against multiple drug resistant parasites. But the main problem is they are very short acting drugs. Very short acting drug. 
एंड सेकेंड दे कैन दे आर कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड इन फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर ऑफ प्रेगनेंस तो टू मेन प्रॉब्लम वन दे आर वेरी शॉर्ट एक्टिंग एंड सेकेंड दे आर कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड इन फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर ऑफ प्रेगनेंस नाउ वी वॉन्ट टू यूज दीज ड्रग्स बिकॉज ऑफ देयर फास्ट एक्शन एंड देयर एफिकेसी अगेंस्ट ड्रग रेजिस्टेंट पैरासाइट बट बिकॉज ऑफ शॉर्ट एक्शन वी कैन नॉट यूटिलाइज दैम अलोन तो वट वी डू इज वी डिवेल्प अ मैथड विच इज कॉल्ड एज ए सी टी ए सी टी इट इज आर्टिमिसन बेस्ड कॉम्बिनेशन थेरेपी सो बेसिकली वट वी डू इन दिस कॉम्बिनेशन इज वी कंबाइन वन ऑफ द आर्टिमिसन विद अ लॉन्ग एक्टिंग एंटी मलेरियल ड्रग so artemisinins will provide their fast action and a long acting drug it will make sure that the when the action of artemisinins finish the effect continues so this combination is called as act and act is now drug of choice for chloroquine resistant parasites whenever chloroquine resistance is present drug of choice will be act now two type of drug combinations are used in india one combination is lumifentrin plus artemether combination artemether plus lumifentrin combination and second type of act used are artisunet plus sulfadoxin pyrimethamine combination artisunet plus sulfadoxin pyrimethamine combination in india this combination is treatment of choice for drug resistant parasites at all places except in north eastern states where the act of choice is artemether plus lumipent all other places it is artisunate plus sulfadoxin pyrimethamine but in north eastern states it is lumipentrin plus artemether so these are the important points regarding the anti malarial drugs now we can discuss the treatment of malaria now treatment of malaria in india is done under national vector born disease control program so according to this program one thing which is assumed is most of the plasmodium vivax are sensitive to chloroquine and most of the plasmodium falciparum are resistant to chloroquine so the drug of choice for plasmodium vivax malaria is chloroquine whereas drug of choice for plasmodium falciparum malaria is artemisinin based combination therapies okay. now if there is mixed infection then the treatment of choice will be artemisinin based combination therapy because it will take care of both plasmodium vivax and falciparum now the treatment of malaria in pregnancy in pregnancy first trimester remember in second and third trimester there will be no different treatment will be same but in first trimester of pregnancy we cannot give artemisinin based combination therapy so in first trimester we discuss chloroquine is safe so treatment of plasmodium vivax remains same but plasmodium falciparum infection we cannot give chloroquine because it is resistant and we cannot give artemisinin because it is contraindicated in first trimester so the drug we use here is quinine for mixed infection also we will use quinine so in first trimester of pregnancy we will use quinine now this is the treatment of uncomplicated malaria then coming to complicated malaria complicated malaria or severe malaria or cerebral malaria so 
सो दिस टाइप ऑफ मलेरिया इज कॉज बाय प्लाज्मोडियम फेल्सिपेरम एंड फॉर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ प्लाज्मोडियम फेल्सिपेरम वी हैव टू यूज आर्टेमिस बट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मलेरिया वी नीड टू गिव इंट्रावेनस इंजेक्शन बाय डेफिनेशन ए सी टी इज ओरल थेरेपी सो वेन वी हैव टू गिव आई वी वी कैन नॉट गिव ए सी टी सो आई वी थेरेपी वी यूज इन दीज कंडीशन इज आर टी सुनेट सो आर टी सुनेट इज ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस बाय इंट्रावेनस रूट ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस बाय इंट्रावेनस रूट सो इट शुड बी गिवन मिनिमम फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स आफ्टर ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स वेन एवर द पर्सन कैन टेक ओरली वी विल शिफ्ट द पर्सन टू आर्टेमिसिन बेस्ड कॉम्बिनेशन थेरेपी ओरली सो दिस इज द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ मलेरिया नाउ मूविंग टू प्रोफाइलैक्सिस ऑफ मलेरिया फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज इन विच पर्सन यू विल वॉन्ट टू गिव प्रोफाइलैक्सिस इन विच पर्सन यू विल वॉन्ट टू प्रिवेंट मलेरिया सो ऑब्वियसली इट इज इन ट्रेवलर्स a person is moving from non endemic area like usa where malaria is not present the person is going from usa to africa where almost every person has malaria so this person will very highly likely that will develop malaria so we want to give the drug before and so that person do not develop malaria so that is prophylaxis now for prophylaxis first question is how long we should give the drugs obviously we have to continue the drug throughout the time the person will remain in endemic area so that means prophylaxis will depend upon the duration of stay so according to duration of stay if the person is planning to stay there for less than 6 weeks then we say short term prophylaxis when the person is planning to stay for less than 6 week in the endemic area we give short term prophylaxis on the other hand if the person is planning to stay for longer period then we use long term prophylaxis now what is the difference is in short term prophylaxis the drug of choice is a doxycycline whereas for long term prophylaxis drug of choice is mefloquine the question is why why we have changed the drug the simple reason is mefloquine is very long acting so when we use mefloquine we need to give once in a week so if a person is planning to stay for 2 years 3 years we will want that we should not give the daily drugs so we will prefer a weekly drug which is mefloquine on the other hand doxycycline need to be given daily now how long the treatment should be given the basic logic is before the person reaches the endemic area the drug must be present in sufficient amount in the blood so it has to be started before the journey yeah? so usually we give two tablet before the journey yeah? then it is continued throughout the time the person stays there and then it should be continued even after the person comes back to cover all the incubation period so that is usually around 4 weeks so the basic concept is that drug should be started two tablets that means two doses should be given before the journey and it is continued after the person comes back for 4 weeks so how long we give doxycycline so it is started 2 days before the journey continued throughout the journey and then after coming back for 4 weeks we will give doxycycline similarly for mefloquine it is started 2 weeks before remember we have to give two doses and it is given once a week so two weeks before and it is continued four weeks after so these are the important points regarding malaria okay